Jericho on the pages of history. The Bible was the word of God. The Israelites were relaxing the banks of River Jordan after they had traveled for 40 years. After they had traveled for 40 years, they were now at the bank of River Jordan. And then Joshua, the great man of God, from the banks of River Jordan, he could look across and see the great city of Jericho. The walls of Jericho almost reached the sky. Big to the extent that there were rooms inside the walls. Don't forget that the Bible says that that woman's house or room was in the, in the wall of Jericho. Powerful. Jericho. And so they, they they, they were so proud of themselves, but something was shaking them. The Israelites, the Israelites were at the other side of River Jordan. It was to be around April, about April, because River Jordan this time was overflowing its bank and very, very turbulent. Very turbulent. Nobody would cross River Jordan at that time of the year. None. Because it was very turbulent. And Israelites were there. And so the Canaanites were relaxing. They were sure that Israel would not be able to cross Jordan at that time. But the closest city after River Jordan would be Jericho. The city of Palms, beautiful city of Jericho in those days, beautiful city with thousands, thousands of people living in Jericho, worshiping their God. They were there when suddenly Joshua saw the, the city and saw the problem they would encounter in Canaan. The man of God. He steps aside alone into the desert and then said, Jehovah, Jehovah, this city is awesome. How can we fight this city? What will I do? I don't have trained the soldiers. We don't have, any. what do we do? As he lifted his face up, he saw a man taller than himself, well dressed for battle. And Joshua stood up. He had his sword and looked at him. And the man stood there, strong with belt and helmet. And he asked him, are you for us? Or against us? And the man said, I am the commander of the Lord's army. Yeah. Ellen White tells us, and that was Jesus. Jesus came down in answer to his prayers. And he said, Go to Jericho. I have handed Jericho over to you. When God asks you to go, please do what? Go. Go to Jericho. And Joshua came back and has got two young boys and asked them, those boys must be very brave boys. All right? He sent them out like spies. He said, go to Jericho. Find out any information about them and let us have them. Let us have the information. I will ask the question 
How did, were the boys able to cross the turbulent water of Jericho? But they crossed it. They crossed it. That was a very brave voice. And they went. And they succeeded in entering Jericho. And they were there. Jericho was a tough place. The citizens of Jericho immediately got the wind that Israelites were in the city. And so the soldiers and their CIDs, all that, they started combing, looking for the place. They couldn't find the boys. Why? When God is with you, when God is with you, nobody, nobody will be against you. One thing I want to tell everybody here is this. Listen to me, those of you online. Joshua, Joshua never ever thought there will be a Rahab in Jericho. Joshua never knew there would be a Rahab in Jericho. He didn't. But someone knew there would be a Rahab in Jericho. Who was that? God knew. So he was just prompted. I mean, the Holy Spirit just asked him, send some two spies. And those spies were actually sent by God to go to Jericho and rescue Rahab. Now there was a soul in Jericho that was secretly longing to belong to God. A soul in Jericho, like we read from Jeremiah chapter 29 from verse 11. Jeremiah, we read from there. For I know the plans I have for you. Declares who? Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and what? The next verse. Then you will call upon me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you. Next. You will seek me and do what? When you seek me with what? Somebody, somebody in Jericho was seeking God with all her heart. You see you here? And those of you who are watching me, wherever you are in this world, the blood of Jesus covers everybody anywhere you are in this world. In the pagan territories, all right, Papua New Guinea, in uh, the northern places of the world, the Arctic region, Greenlands, wherever you are, in their little hut, and you are thinking about God, God will be there. Yeah. Don't think because you are small, you think God is not listening to you. No, the problem is not God, the problem is you, the problem is me. Uh, when I was talking with my daughter, Boma, the other day, she whispered to me, says, an inspiration she had, I said, you are correct. That when the Israelites left Egypt, when they left Egypt, over two million, they were terrible. Seven-day Adventists that they didn't know who they were. They will love God today and hate God the following day. They were not hot and they were not what? Cold. They left Egypt and finally it would have taken them just three months to get to the Jordan. Only three months to get to Jordan. They sent out two spies to go to Jordan. The same Jordan we are talking about. To get to Jordan, cross it and enter Canaan. Within one year, all oh, they grumbled and grumbled and grumbled. Even the, the spies came back and said, Oh, hell! 
Why did we come out of Egypt? It would have been better for us to die in the desert. And the angels said, Amen. You will die in the desert. And they grumbled against God. And when Moses said, Please, please, they got stoned. They said, Stone Moses. Stone him. They said, They should stone him. And God came and said, All right. Now, you will spend, instead of the 40 days, you will spend 40 years in the desert and then die in the desert. Since you said you would prefer to die in the desert, your children will be the ones that will enter Canaan. You know something? At the bank of Jordan, after 40 years, all of them died except Joshua and who? Caleb. All of them died. And their children now, some of them 60, some of them 50, some of them 40, some of them that were born in the desert. They came to the bank of River Jordan. When they came there, like my daughter observed, God had not changed. Did you know that? When this set finally got to the same place, God had not changed. The Canaanites had not changed. But Israel had changed. The Israel, the group that got there now had changed. So they were ready to cross. The same God that brought them there before hadn't changed. God doesn't change. The Canaanites were so wicked and brutal had also not changed. But at this period, after 40 years, Israel had changed. And so they were able to cross River Jordan. So the problem is not God. God is waiting for you and waiting for me. To do what? To change. To change. And then we can visit God. We can see him. The problem is not God. The problem is ourselves. Now something happened. All those spies. How were they able to trace this woman? They were not planning to meet a Rehab. They didn't have any plan. But somehow, the angels of God let them. And they got to her. And the woman said, come, come. I know who you are. You are Israelites. Even though they were disguised, covering their head, they said, you are Israelites. Come to my house. And she took them to her house. And when they were there, she gave them food. They ate. Gave them a place where they would sleep. But before they went to bed, she said, We know you are God. Your God is a powerful God, Jehovah. She even called the name Jehovah. This young lady wasn't up to 30 years old, probably between 25 and 30. She was not old. This young lady was able to tell the story. He said, we are aware of what you did to the kings of the Amorites, to the five kings of the Midianites. We are aware how you destroyed Sihon and Og. We are aware. We are also aware of how your God divided the Red Sea and you passed through high, no, on dry ground. When her mother was married. She was born while Israel was in the desert. She was born while Israel was in the desert. But she could tell the story. So not only herself, so many others, thousands and so many cities in Canaan knew about this. 
they were aware of the story of Israel, especially how they killed Og. The king Og was terrible. The king that was about almost about 14 feet tall. His bed was 14 feet long. The width of his bed was six feet. The Bible says. These were men who were involved in witchcraft, in wizardry. And they believed so much in gods and their juju. The power of their gods. That's why they won't fear the God of Israel until they died. So this woman said, we are where? Now promise me, now that I have shown you kindness, promise me that you will spare my life. The life of my father, the life of my sister, the life of my mother, my sisters, my brothers, and all that belong to them. What a request. She requested and they told her, everything you have requested is granted. As long as take this red piece of cloth, when you see us come to destroy this city, let it hang it by your window. This red piece of cloth will represent the blood of Jesus. When I see the blood, what will happen? I will pass over you. Do you know why I'm saying this? This race we are running has not yet stopped. We are still running it. Rahab of Jericho. From that day, they promised her. Her heart went out to God. She was no longer involved in immorality. She was no longer involved in sleeping with men. This woman gave her life to Christ. This woman gave her life to God of Israel. That is why this woman will become one of the great grandmothers of Jesus Christ. Even though she was very dirty, till tomorrow the Bible will call her a prostitute. Prostitute. But that prostitute finally became the mother of Jesus Christ. Why? She came as it, she was and she surrendered to the God of Israel. She didn't know much about him except the little she knew. But the little she knew, she affected it. You, is it little that you know? Many of you that are watching me here since you were born, you have been knowing the truth and the truth upon truth. You. So what are you doing with it? Look at this woman. What about all others in Jericho? The city of Jericho. They knew. They were aware. Also, they knew that Israelites, God, was powerful. But they wouldn't change. They trusted their God. Because their God will bring fire from the eyes. Bring fire from their mouth. Do that. They are God. They trusted in the power of their God and their juju priests. The juju priests were busy seeing visions and, that and telling them they will win. Nothing will happen to them. Unfortunately, those juju priests were agents of Satan, evil spirits. And evil spirits do not have any powers where God is. They didn't know. But this girl took a decision to align herself with the people of God. She survived. If tonight you align yourself with the people of God, you will survive. You will survive. There are no two ways about that. God has stamped it. But as many, as many, as accept, will survive. In Isaiah 55, 
from verse 6 isaiah from verse 6 what does it say what does it say read it okay seven let him turn to the lord and he will have mercy to our god and he will pray eight my thoughts are not your thoughts nine i am your ways my dick nine Did you hear that? My ways are not your ways. Neither. Okay? Are your thoughts my thoughts? As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. God delivers. God will deliver you. God is powerful. If you do what Rahab did, you will be saved the way God saved her. And this woman was spared. When Jericho finally was destroyed, this woman and her family will not be destroyed. God has a way of saving people. God has a way of delivering his children if you trust in him and you serve him no matter how many years he has a way of wriggling you out and making sure you inherit the kingdom that's if you remain interested in god i will tell you a story a story that i read i got it first from my daughter who sent it to me online and I have read it in Melody Madness, uh, Madness book. A wonderful deliverance of a woman who was 92 years old. How many years old? Pastor Goya, a Romanian. Pastor Goya. Whenever I, I, I read this story, I say, hey, God has a way of delivering his people. He was posted to a church. He still works with the general conference. Pastor Goya works with the general conference. Is there? Very interesting story. He said he was posted to the church. When he got to that church, there was a powerful woman there. Very powerful. You know, sometimes in our churches we have powerful elders. Eh? Paul also had powerful elders. John had powerful elders. So some of them, they will not enter the church, neither will they allow other people to enter. In the days of Paul, 2,000 years ago. So it's not something new. When an elder is powerful in the church, in Rumukuta church, may that powerful man's designation be positive. Yeah. Wherever the powerful elder, may he be powerful elder who serves Christ. Not an elder who serves Satan, but who will serve Jesus. We want powerful elders for Christ. Don't we? Powerful women leaders for Christ. This woman in that church was very powerful. She had so much money. She bought the church over. She bought the conference over. Even in the district. Pastors that come there, you make one mistake, she will fire you. She will throw you out of the church. And the conference will not say anything because she was in charge. And so when the pastor came, she visited the pastor, the wife, and told the pastor, I am in charge here. You do what I say or you are gone. That was welcome address she gave to the pastor. And the pastor and the wife, pastor, I said, it's okay. Well, then you're welcome. He said, you heard me? Yes. You do it and follow my... In the church board, whatever she said in the church board, that's what will stand. And all the members 
accepted that the pastor Goya, no, still alive, doesn't belong to such things and will not. So both of them couldn't work together because the pastor would not agree. And so she hated the pastor. Some members were coming quietly to whisper to the pastor, please keep standing where you are. Thank you so much. Because they were afraid of them. <laughs> Thank you so much. Keep, please keep standing where you are. Because they didn't know how to get around the woman. She had money. She could push something around. The conference would listen to her. Because she was even sponsoring them. It's quite a pity. But then, unfortunately, she had an accident. While she was skiing on the ice. At that age, she had an, and broke her leg. They took her to the hospital. What do you think the pastor will do? Maybe he, he will say, Praise God. The pastor didn't say that. He was there. He and the wife prayed for her. The wife said, Go to the hospital. Visit her. And pray for her. And the pastor, <laughs> pastor said, Me? Go to pray for her in the hospital. This woman, he said, go. Their wife brought flowers. You know, you both people, they love flowers. Gave flowers. Go and visit him. Visit her. And the pastor managed. Got to the hospital. And then saw the woman on the bed. Hospital bed. The woman opened her eyes and saw the pastor. What are you doing here? Get out. Get out. Told the pastor, get out of this place. Pastor said, I have come to, to do what? Get out of this place. And the pastor, okay, brought the flower, said, the wife gave me, please take the flower. She took the flower and used the flower and hit the pastor on the head. He said, get out of this place. If you were a pastor, will you go back there? Huh? The pastor returned. Pastor went back. And the wife said, how was it? Did you pray for her? <laughs> he said, the woman took the flower and hit my head. Why would I pray for her? He said, no, 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 no. Go back. Don't come back until you pray for her. He said, I can't go back there. He said, go back. He said I hate that woman. I hate the woman. The, woman, the wife said, Go and do what is right. Go and pray for her. Don't come back until I pray for her. So I can go. The wife bought another bunch of flowers. Said, "Take, go, go." Inside the man's heart, he knew that was the right thing to do, but the humanity was not allowing him. Isn't it? So, this what kind of wahala? Our people will say wahala. All right. What kind of problem is this? Go. And so the pastor managed and walked back and got there again. The woman saw him. What are you doing here? Then the I order you to get out of this place. What are you doing here? Said, My wife asked me to come back. And she bought this flower and this thing, so I should give them to you. And the woman looked at him. He said, you are the only pastor that has come back. Of all the others, so you are the only one. He said, but I hate you. And the pastor said, I also hate you. <laughs> I said, I wouldn't tell you lies. He said, ma'am, I hate you. And the pastor the woman said, yeah, I hate you. I said, I also hate you. Now, since both of us hate each other, can we find out what the problem is all about? And maybe pray for each other. By this time, the woman was coming down. I said, you are the only person who has come back. The woman said, it's pastor, okay. Tell me why you are hating me like this, and I will tell you my own. And so the pastor sat down, and the woman said, 70 years ago, when she was 22, that's when she had a 
a problem and God was nowhere to help her since then that she hated God 70 years now she's 92 hated God and that and God will not listen and the pastor said mm, no the problem is not God the problem is you you couldn't forgive yourself God has already forgiven you for the past 70 years and you are God's daughter and the pastor spent the next one hour talking with this woman and that elderly woman tears were running down her cheeks weeping on the sick bed then the pastor father held her hand and prayed with her and I said thank you thank you the woman found salvation few days from that time she died Would we say hallelujah to God? Yes. Can God move in a mysterious way? Yes. God sent that pastor there. The other pastors were banana bags. The pastors that came there, they were what? Banana bags. Ripe banana bags. This one is a real pastor and stood his ground. Make sure wherever you are in your home, outside of your home don't be what don't be a banana bag very sweet right when we dump you on the ground everything will melt nothing this one it was this a pastor of the everlasting gospel himself and his wife god sent them there god knew the days of that woman were numbered and God wanted to deliver her. Satan came in and fought the battle. Tried to stop uh, uh, the woman from being saved. Like Satan went after Cyrus so that Israel would not be delivered. But God said, no, I have overruled. May God overrule in your lives. God overruled in her life. And the woman finally waited tears of repentance and ordered finally she was saved before she breathed her last Rahab the same thing so wherever you are that's why I brought up this story wherever you are and you're interested in serving God God will deliver you Amen. Jesus is in the business of delivering people that's why he came business of saving people that's why Christ came Everybody listen to me wherever you are. God is in the business of saving your soul. Wherever you are. Some of you have not eaten since morning. The food will come. The problem is not God. It's you. Hand yourself over to God like Rahab of Jericho. The food will come. What you eat, will, you will not lack it. Don't be afraid. Do what God has asked you to do. By faith, leave the rest. God will supply you the things you need. Rahab of Jericho. This woman saved her father, her mother, her relations by their tens or hundreds. When the wall of Jericho fell, because they were inside, she would tell them, don't move. They asked us to remain here. So remain here. She locked the door. Unfortunately, her house was inside the wall the wall that will fall that wall was supposed to collapse and when israelites blew their trumpet and shouted mighty angels touched the walls of jericho and the walls collapsed but before the walls collapsed that place where that that red red piece of cloth was pointing to the blood of jesus Angels were there. Amen. The walls of Jericho collapsed, fell, but that point where God's children were did not fall. Amen. That was the only portion. Archaeologists have discovered it all. Recently, archaeologists were digging. They, they dug and saw a particular portion 
of the wall with rooms that did not collapse. Did not collapse. And our people pointed out that should be the rooms where Rahab of Jericho was staying. That particular portion did not collapse. Let me tell you something here. You will not collapse. Yeah. This woman surrendered herself, surrendered her life, gave her life to Jesus Christ. Adultery. Fornication. No more. It's Jehovah. If you do that tonight, if you do that tonight, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, woman friend, and you surrender tonight like Rahab and said, no more. Tomorrow morning, your eyes will see the glory of God. Amen. That's exactly what God wants to hear from you. That's what God wants to hear from you, that you have given your life up. Rahab of Jericho prepared for the end of Jericho. She prepared for the end. She knew the end was coming. So she gave her life to God, chiseled out all her weaknesses and that. They moved them and put her mind open. During this period that elapsed between those young men and Joshua coming in, during that period, she went out evangelizing teaching, bringing in more people to come into her room so that they will be saved. That's what we should be doing now. That's your job now. With all that's going on around you, this is the period for you to surrender totally. Those things that are itching you, your feelings, whatever it is, let them go to hell. Throw them away. And stand on the altar of God and be saved. What God did for the woman of Jericho, Rahab, God will do that for you. Amen. She married an Israelite. They brought her in. And she became an Israelite with all her relations. All of them melted into Israel. And Salmon from the tribe of Judah married her. At least, maybe they had many children, we wouldn't know. But the Bible tells us one of the sons born to both of them, or maybe the only son, was Boaz. Was who? Boaz. And Boaz ended up marrying Ruth. Have you heard about Ruth? Do you know about it? And Boaz and Ruth gave birth to Obed. And then Obed gave birth to who? Jesse. Mm -hmm. We are coming. And Jesse gave birth to who? King David. Can you see that? Rahab was one of the great grandmothers of David. King David. That harlot of Jericho was one of the great grandmothers because of her faith in God. She wouldn't know what we are discussing here. She wouldn't know. But when eternity begins and Christ returns, and she stands on the portals of eternity, and she is what had happened, how her story had gone around the world and changed the lives of millions, and that Jesus will come and hold and say, Mommy, and Jesus will hold and say, My mommy. Tears of joy, me, prostitute of Jericho. I became one of your progenitors, one of your great grandmothers. Said, Yes, that is the working of God. That's how God operates. All right? Nobody is little. Nobody here is little. Even all these little children, we call them little children. Tomorrow there will be men and women. Powerful. So tonight, when you go home tonight, Make sure what God did for, Jer did for Rahab, God will do it for you. Amen. Because many of us here are not better than Rahab. Many of us also have sinned like Rahab. Many of us here have done quite a lot of things we shouldn't have done. But our prayer is that let it end tonight. Amen. Change. Change. 
change for the better. Change. Be a child of God. Be a child of God. No matter how tempted, no matter how you feel, make sure that you stand for that which is right. No matter how difficult it is, say no, but this is the right thing to do. Heaven will help you. Heaven will assist you. You will not lose this battle. Be clean. God can use you the way he used Goya and his wife. The Goyans were tough. But we saw that in the power of God they worshipped. They were tougher than the problems. And they were able to do the will of God. You too, here by God's grace, you will do the will of God. Amen. Christ will soon come. He told the Jews, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, he told them, be very careful. He said, the prostitutes will go to heaven before you. Huh? Christ said, the prostitutes will inherit the kingdom before these people. He said, you say you are righteous and that, but see these prostitutes, you see them? Like this, people like Mary Magdalene, and all that. So they will go to heaven before you. When they see the truth, some of them will grab the truth. Those of us who are learned and they are theologians and we teach Sabbath school lessons every Sabbath, teachers' lesson, we do all that. Some of us are so far from heaven. I'm not saying Rumokuta Church or those of you who are listening to me online. I pray that the time you put in studying your Sabbath school lessons and in teaching them, God should bless those periods for you. Amen. And that you will represent what you teach. May God grant us the grace this night. Amen. Tomorrow night, we will talk about the occult. And that's not very pleasant. What will we discuss tomorrow night? The occult. What does the Bible say? We will discuss it. But for God's children in Christ, we are victorious. Yeah. As you go home tonight, wherever you are, even though you go barefooted and you walk on broken glasses, they will not cause you any harm. Yeah. If you step upon snakes, the snakes will not bite you. Why? Because angels of God will go before you. Yeah. Angels may not stop the snake from biting, may not stop the snake from coming, but they'll stop the snake from biting you. Yeah. So that you can see the glory of God. Yeah. I want to whisper a prayer for you, and all who are here tonight, and those who are there listening. Uh, God will make us a rehab to prepare for the end, to be conscious of the end and prepare for it. Can you step out here? Let me pray for you. Those of you at the Down League centers, can you walk towards the screen, wherever you are? Let me whisper a prayer for you. You come, wherever you are, come to, to the front. Let me pray for you tonight before you go home. Before you go home, this night, From what we have studied here this night, like Pastor Goya, your feelings left with him, not going anywhere. But he went because that's the right thing to do. Not what he wanted to do, but the right thing to do. It was not pleasant for him. He only attended, he only went to that woman because it was the right thing to do. With him, no. And that's how you will feel tonight and tomorrow. There are many things you are supposed to do. You don't want to do them. But you will do them because God has asked you to do. All right? Do them because God has asked you to do them. Forgive your wife, forgive your husband. Forgive your children. Children, forgive your parents. Forgive your sisters. Pardon them. Let them go from the bottom of your heart. The people who have taken your father's land, leave them. Be praying for them. Then God will handle them. Do you hear me? 
not you god will handle them some people say pastor no no, no i won't give up listen leave that if you are going to court can go to court all right you can go if god touches you let it go leave it and ask god let your will be done you may not like it but all that occupies your mind is how to please god and god will show his power before you and that's what we're praying for all of you here it's a lesson we should learn from pastor goya the man could still go there and say you hate i hate you i hate you terribly i hate you the woman said i hate you, I hate you too that's the pastor and the member inside his heart but yet he went out to do what is right and finally the woman was weeping rehab of jericho look at her an idol worshiper finally turn around you too you can turn around Amen. wherever you are you can turn around Amen. some of you are listening to me you know that it's tough but your god is tougher turn around it shall be well with you Amen. those of you who came tonight for the first time can i see your hands up you came here for the first time tonight all right for the first time tonight I want you to stay behind so that we can give you some magazines we have for you when we close. So that I can hand them over to you. Gracious Father in heaven, I pray for your children. Not only here, but in all the downlink centers throughout the world. Father, as they contemplate upon the story of Rahab, of Jericho, who prepared for the end of Jericho. And she succeeded. And she and her families were saved. Now that we are till the end of the world, help also to prepare for the end. Amen. And by thy grace, we shall also be saved. Amen. Bless this congregation. Amen. Wherever they are in the Dunkley centers, Father, please bless them. Amen. Make things easy for them. Amen. Tonight, as they go home, Angel Gabriel will go with them. Amen. Father, bless your children. And help us by tomorrow morning, we are something different. Not evil, but in righteousness. Our lives have changed. Husbands and wives that we are not talking, by tomorrow morning, they will be hugging each other. Amen. Please, Father, even children that have gone astray, by tomorrow morning, Father, they should be returning home. Amen. There is nothing too hard for God. And the great prayer says, with God, everything is possible. Father, take your people home. Let us say the grace together grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit abide with us now and forever Amen have a good night God go with you okay all our Bible friends that came here this night please come around come around and the pastor so that the pastors can attend to you